Hello everyone, this is Christina with Two Howling Monkeys and for today's See and Sew project we're going to make a felt eyeglass case. For this project, you're going to need two full sheets of felt, one for the cover, one for the lining. You're also going to need an assortment of colors of scraps of felt for the flowers and the leaves. You're going to need rickrack tram, your fabric scissors, of course your eyeglasses, a button, about five inches of elastic cord, matching thread, straight pins, sewing needle, your sewing machine, and also if you're wanting to um, do a little bit of hand stitching embroidery on the flowers of the cover of the eyeglass case, then you will need some embroidery floss. So the eyeglass case is going to be folded in half and one side is going to measure three and a quarter inch wide by seven inches long. So that means that the width of it needs to be doubled and that would make it six and a half inches. So I am going to take the paper and I am going to measure seven inches. I've already did my first mark there. seven inches long and I need six and a half inches wide. So that is the panel I need to cut out the cover and the lining. The reason why I always first draw my pattern on paper instead of drawing it just on the felt is sometimes I just I would like to keep this as a pattern and I put them aside and I save them and I have all kinds of patterns and also if I make a mistake and do the measurements incorrectly then I don't have a mess on the back of the fabric. So trace your pattern on both the cover and the lining. So here is the cut panel for the cover. I'm making this the top side and you want to make sure that this is the top that this is the width and that this is the length because the measurements are so close. So I see here that this measures six and a half inches. This is seven inches so I have it correct. So I'm going to make this the top edge. Now you're going to need to put the loop in to close it at the top. So you need to figure the front part is three and a quarter inches. You need to mark one and a half inches right there. Okay, and that is where you're going to put your loop. Pin it in place. Lay your lining on top. And pin across here. 
Now you're going to stitch a quarter inch seam along the top here. going to sew with a quarter inch seam and you want to lock your stitch at the beginning and at the end and also over where the elastic cord is. Okay, you're going to want to trim the elastic cord. Turn it right side out. You want to work those edges to where they're even and there's no bunching and then you want to pin across here and then you want to top stitch right along the edge here okay so what you're gonna do is you fold it like this and this is how the back of the loop and then you're gonna have your button on the front here so let's do the next step. So you saw last um, I folded over and here's the loop. We're going to be putting a button here eventually. So to keep it lined up I pinned it. You want to make sure your edges here are even. And I just went down and I laid it flat and I pinned it here. As you can see I then took my scissors and I trimmed the edge because the teal, the lining was sticking out a little. That's going to happen when you fold it like this. So I just trimmed the edge, rounded the corner, and trimmed all the way up. Made it look nice and clean and sharp. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to add your rickrack. We're going to be putting it in between the two layers of lining here it's going to be going down through there like that and it's going to be running along this edge right here so to put the rickrack in you're going to tuck it down in here like this you don't want it sticking out too much for when you sew it you're not going to be catching much of it you want to get it down in there to where it looks like little bumps are sticking out so you don't want it like that not necessarily like that but more pushed in like that okay and then as you uh, go down through here you could be pinning it When you go to pin it, let some of this hang out here. We're going to get back to that in just a minute. And when you start, you want where this edge begins, you want the divot that goes down. So like how it goes down here, you want that to begin there. And then when you pin, don't pin going straight in, turn it, and then do that. What you do when you do that is you're shifting the top layers of fabric this way and it makes it get askew and you don't want that. You want that edge to stay nice and even. So you take your pin and you go in at an angle, catch through the back, and come out at an angle. Okay, we're at the end here. You want to trim that. Leave it just a little tail. You see where it goes down on the edge here. So you want to fold it to go like this. Okay, and then you're going to tuck this tail down in between the layers here. That's all pinned nicely. Now you need to come over here at the beginning and you need to tuck that end in. So what I did is I tucked that raw edge in and then I'm turning it down. 
And once it's sewn, it's going to look like that, all clean edge. That's what we want. Now we're ready to sew. What you're going to do is you're going to start just in, back stitch, and come along, and you're just sewing along the edge, top stitching, all the way around. So what you're going to do is top stitch right along the edge here. So what you can uh, do is sew a quarter inch, but you're going to adjust your needle from it being centered in the middle to the stit the needle being moved over to the right. So it's stitching closer to the edge that you're sewing along than it would be if the needle was centered. So as you can see, my needle is no longer centered moving down the middle. I have shifted it over and it's stitching along more along the side here. So when you put your fabric up here and you do a quarter inch seam, that needle is going to be stitching closer to the edge without you moving closer to the edge and possibly sewing crooked. So you're moved, you've moved in just a little. You start to sew, back stitch to the edge. So I removed the pins and trimmed the threads and as you can see it's stitched really close to the edge and kept it looking nice and it caught the rickrack. So here is the eyeglass case and you can see I already cut out two leaves. I want to show you how I cut those out. You could actually draw it on here if you want. It'll be easier to follow along. But this is pretty much how I do it. And then you're going in, going back out. And you don't want each side to be exactly the same. because leaves are not that way. And then what we'll be doing is tucking it in like that and you'll have a pretty little leaf. So you'll want two of those. We've got here a couple of um, squares of felt that we're going to be making the outside parts of the flowers. This is going to be the center and what I have here, uh, I have three different size circles. I just went around my room and pulled them off of things. So for me, I want the pale pink flower to be the larger. And then I want these two to be smaller. So you're going to have one large flower, larger flower and two smaller flowers. So it doesn't really matter what you use. I'm using a pin just because I don't have one handy, but you can use a pencil or a fabric pen or whatever. I am going to use my pin and just follow along the outside. It doesn't really matter what you use because you, when you cut it, you're going to cut all of that off. So to review what I've just done, I traced um, the large cap onto the pale pink. I want that to be my large main focal flower. I traced the medium cap on the two teal squares because I want those to be the two smaller flowers. I had traced that uh, this same cap on the dark pink thinking it would work good for the center of this flower but I changed my mind you can do that. <laughs> and instead, I want to keep the centers all the same size, so I did three of just the bottom of this. In this. And now cut out each of your circles.
Now you're going to take the large pale pink flower and you're going to just go around and clip the edges. Now I'm going to take the centers of both of the teal flowers and clip them the same as I did the pale pink, however not as extreme. So not as deep of cuts, just clip along the edges. I arranged the leaves and the flowers where I want them to be. So I have the thread and needle for the leaves. You take this leaf, the bottom one, and I'm going to fold it like this. Okay? And then you tack that. Then you take your other leaf, like how you want it, and tuck and fold, and you sew that on there. It's pretty much how I want it, so I'm going to tie a knot and I'm not going to cut the thread I'm just tying it to secure it now I want to sew that onto the case arrange your leaves like how you want them to be and then tack what I did is I went down just a little bit there Tacked that on so that leaf will stay in place. It's not going to move around. Then I come over here and tack the second leaf in place. And then you can tack around the edges if you tack here and there around the edges. You could do even a little blanket stitch if you want or whatever. What I've been doing is a, just a little straight stitch around the edges just to hold it down and it still has the poofiness um, there that we gave it with the pleat, the fold, but um, I'm just tacking down the edges with a straight stitch. Be careful that you don't go all the way through and sew the inside layers together. You're basically just going over the cover layer here. So I arranged the flowers like how I want them and what I have here is a needle with the hot pink thread on and all you're going to do is tack in the center of each flower and sew that flower down. So I have the flowers sewn on and now we're going to sew the button on and you need to figure out where it needs to go and goes around the loop nicely I think about right there so sew your button on so that is the finished product of the felt eyeglass case. I hope you enjoyed this project and had fun trying out your machine sewing and your hand sewing. So thank you very much everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be putting out videos weekly that you could follow along. Thank you very much for everyone for watching. You all have a wonderful day.